You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And um, before we go to the headlines of the news, uh, remember that we said that a lot of things are happening and uh, it's good to know uh, some of these things. Um, subsidy removal, Governor Obaseki reduces work days for civil servants to three times a week, increases minimum wage to 40,000 naira. Remember that the uh, TUC is asking for 200,000 naira, so he has proven he's very proactive and he's uh, increasing it to 40,000 naira. Let's see whether the TUC will keep quiet and say he has done what they wanted um, done for the workforce. Also, we have a story where the National Assembly, especially, uh, particularly the, the reps, have declared Nigeria Air Launch a fraud. They say Nigeria Air Launch is a fraud. Let's see how they are going to uh, pursue that case and uh, bring it to a conclusion. And we find, if it is a fraud, we find that the people who are supposed to uh, be held responsible for this fraud are prosecuted and possibly jailed. Well, because we've seen how uh, the abracadabra that was behind the launch of the Nigeria Air. In fact, there was a plane that was brought and nothing else changed in the plane apart from the painting. And it was said that billions were used to paint a plane. Well, I don't know. I've never owned a plane, so I don't know how difficult it is to paint a plane. So one plane could take like 10 billion naira to paint. I don't know how that works. But if they have found out that this, this is fraud or they suspect that this is fraud, uh, we Nigerians are watching to see what they are going to do about it. We know they are not the enforcers of the law, but they make the laws as well. And they can influence a, a lot of things that happen uh, in our country, in Nigeria. If they have felt or they are feeling that it is a fraud, let them bring let them prosecute the person that is involved or the people that are involved. And let's see how that goes. The tent assembly, maybe they will just be the, the, the thing that we need, the, the magic wand that we need to make Nigeria as great as we want it to be. Let's see how that goes. Well, so we will go to um, the newspapers right now and try to see what the headlines are. Maybe some of those ones that we just read now will be there on, on the papers as well. But let's start with the Nation newspaper. The Nation newspaper before us uh, is starting with a, the headline, Tinubu in crucial talks over Senate President as Speaker. In crucial talks over Senate President as Speaker. That's the leaders of the National Assembly. That's the uh, major headline there. And the writers are President urges Wase Batara uh, Gagdi orders to accept party's choice. Meeting slated with APC governors, NWC senators, reps elect today. So that meeting will happen and we will see uh, what the outcome of the meeting will be. We have other smaller headlines on top of that newspaper, that um, front page, we have Nigeria Air Launch, a fraud, red panel claims. Okay, NLC, why we suspended plan strike? And then uh, OB endorses subsidy removal. Uh, you can find that story on page four of the nation. Senate okays 20 special advisors for president and manufacturers spend uh, 76.7 billion naira on par in six months. That's a whopping sum. Okay. Uh, there's also that worrisome story. Some Northwest ex governors dined with terrorists, says Kaduna Governor uh, Obasani. Okay. Filing discrepancies toll Atiku PDP petition. That's also on uh, the nation. Court slams lawyer with 20 million naira fine over frivolous anti tinubu case. Okay, uh, those are the headlines uh, we are ready to take from the nation. Okay, we should move to another newspaper. From the nation, uh, we go to uh, the punch. The punch should be another, our next um, newspaper. 
subsidy reps demand NNPCL audit over unaccounted 2 trillion naira assets. Uh, riders are some NNP, NNPCL subsidiaries bought crude oil without evidence of payments. That's according to the lawmakers and legislators, OPS back refineries privatization. Uber bold drivers begin nationwide strike. Interesting. Uber bold drivers begin nationwide strike. Whatever that reason, their reason is, uh, you can find that story on the front page and continued on page 2 and 19. Uh, Obasa re-elected speaker as Sonolu inaugurates Lagos Assembly. We got that news yesterday. Obasa uh, has been re-elected the speaker. This is the third time consecutively he's been elected speaker of the house uh, in Lagos. That's history. Um, Anti-inauguration lawyer finds 20 million faces NBA probe. Uh, police investigate assassination of UI professor and journalism icon ex-Daily Times editor Ehana Enahoro for UK burial today. Okay. May you rest in peace. Um, House alleges fraud asks Tinubu to suspend Nigeria Air. You'll find that on page 19 of The Punch. Um, 51 Josel for Kogi Bayelsa Imo Governor's seat. Uh, that is on page 29. And finally, uh, Senate throws out Buhari's controversial water bill. Mm. That bill is really controversial. So now Senate has thrown it out. Page 3, you'll get the full details of that news. Okay. Those are the headlines on the front page of The Punch. We'll move now to Daily Trust. Daily Trust is next, and the biggest headline there is uh, subsidy removal. Artisans, business owners accuse NLC, TUC of selling out. CSOs knock unions, warns other Nigerians covered. Why we suspended strike labor? Uh, fear of business loss looms. Manufacturers Association of Nigeria said that. Civil society leaders, activists to go ahead with mass protests. Okay, so even if there's no... A strike from NLC and TUC, civil society leaders will still go ahead. The smaller headlines there above, uh, President, Presidential Tribunal adjourns over INEX failure to supply PDP materials. Reps declare Nigeria Air launch fraud, want officials involved prosecuted. Then IFC supports BUA with $500 million facility to boost Sokoto plant. Okay, we do hope we're going to be having uh, cement very, very cheap uh, after now. Okay, still on uh, Daily Trust, drama as Nasarawa Assembly gets two speakers. Nigerians will say now, now. <laughs> okay, food crisis looms. Farmers tell Tinubu and UI professor shot dead in Ibadan. That will be all from uh, Daily Trust this morning, and we move to Nature News. The biggest headlines, uh, headline on Nature News is Na um, Nature News publisher urges companies in Nigeria to on payment of plastic tax. AFDB determined to fight pollution, as according to Barrow, uh, legislation required for success, as former minister said that, and youth should be in the fight against plastic pollution, that is Safia. Other headlines are, uh, Adelike creates Ministry of Environment and Climate Change. That's new. Uh, we have also a Global Food Prices Index drop in May, according to the United Nations. Nigeria adopts policy, legal ways, others for waste management. Subsidy removal, stakeholders Champion eco friendly environment in Nigeria. Group calls for reinvestment of subsidy fund. Uh, Bone Climate Change Conference AGN pushes adoption measures for women and youths. Okay, uh, those are the headlines that we uh, could see on the Nature News that we will want to talk about this morning. But when you get the, a copy of any of these newspapers that I just read, you'll find more headlines uh, there, more stories there that you can find uh, very educative uh, for you this morning and beyond. Our Nigeria.
will move on if you know a little bit about what is happening. The guest this morning to help us uh, talk about these headlines is uh, Tunde Kolawole. Tunde Kolawole is a legal practitioner here in Lagos State. Tunde, good morning and welcome to the program. Okay. We're trying to uh, reconnect with uh, uh, Tunde Kolawole. As soon as we can connect, we will bring him to talk to us about uh, some of the things that we've just talked about, or uh, we've just read to you from the headlines. Tunde Kolawole, I understand you have rejoined us. Good morning, Tunde. Thank you, thank you for having me. Okay, good. Uh, well, let's just go right ahead and um, look at the headlines. Um, let's begin with uh, the nation, what is found in the nation. Tinubu in crucial talks over Senate President Speaker. We've always been going back and forth on this, whether the President should be involved or not. Uh, so we'd like to have your thoughts on the fact that the President is the one in crucial talks, as they put it, over Senate President and Speaker. The discussion of the president over the Senate president and the speaker. Yeah. When the ordinary man puts democracy, the president is not supposed to be the one that will dispatch to become the Senate president and who is going to be the speaker of the House of Representatives. But that usually is within the jurisdiction of the political party that has the majority. In the, in the National Assembly. I recollect uh, between 1979 and 1983 that um, when we had the Unity Party of Nigeria, we had the National Republican, uh, from, I mean, uh, the NRC, I think, uh, political party, uh, which produced a president, um, uh, Shou Shagari, as their president. At that period in time, it was the party that decided who takes the slot for the president, who takes the slot for the vice president, and then the speaker of the House of Reps, and then also the Senate uh, uh, president. And then, apart from having an understanding within the, within the political party, they also wanted it to reflect a geographical distribution of the country that at least each of the geographical zones of the country will have um, uh, important offices that have been slotted or allocated or uh, in their or or give it to them, so as to have equal and equal representation in all the different tiers and segments and branches uh, of the government. So, if it is the president that now wants to be calling the show as the guy to become the Senate president and the speaker of the House of Representatives, I am not too sure uh, that would be too democratic. Invariably, what we're going to have is a kind of a national assembly in which uh, is whatever the president wants or the electoral of government wants that the National Assembly will be turning as they will be putting their steel on rubber samples. Just as we currently have, you know, the different states of the federation, which is the governor, who dictates not just what is happening in the federal of government, but also in the houses of assembly, and even also in the judiciary. That is not too healthy for democracy. Mm. Okay, um, another, he another headline that we have found here is that um, the Senate has thrown out the Buhari's controversial water bill. There's this water bill that uh, everybody kept talking about, some were for and others were against it, and majority were against it anyway. And now the president has left, this bill has been thrown out. Do you have any understanding about what the, the provisions of this water bill were and why there was need for it to be thrown out or whether it should be revisited? Well, honestly, that's a very stubborn question to, to answer. But I will try to navigate it uh, within my own understanding of the matter. You will recall that not too long ago, or just recently, a uh, certain thing came up on the social media in which the present uh, president was being castigated uh, for supporting the withdrawal uh, for uh, uh, subsidy. Mm. It was um, put on the social media. Some of the comments he had made in the past in which he was, um, in which he lampooned Dr. Google Jonathan for putting hardship on the Nigerian people by withdrawing the fuel subsidy by increasing fuel prices in certain at that level in time. In fact, it was said that uh, he almost concluded, or he affirmed his statement 
they will start to be aching to say that there was no first office anywhere. And the party you know, on, on the platform which he is running, was contested and won the election as often, said what? And there's nothing like toxicity. That is the uh, 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 rule. So, now that that statement has been brought out, I am sure it is pricking the conscience of the president, who in 2015 said there was no, uh, no toxicity, to now come in 2023 and say, look, uh, there is, uh, they are going to be removing the poem um, uh, toxicity. Also, don't forget, the first toxicity is not popular within the rank and file of the labor, within the rank and file of the market women and the ordinary poor people of Nigeria, which they remove and now all with what has been done. Prices have gone up as much as 1,000 percent in some of uh, these places. The Naira has been further devalued and what have you. And uh, uh, people have also pointed out when you go to places like America, between US and all that, there are subsidies on fuel in a place like the US, for example, and also even in a place like Saudi Arabia. So if some of the major oil producing countries of the world, or major oil consuming uh, uh, petroleum product consuming nations of the world, have subsidies on their fuel, why is it difficult? Why is it impossible? Or why should Nigeria not also enjoy uh, uh, the same thing? Besides, you have all the refineries or their apart in the country. Billions of naira go into the into rehabilitation of those refineries and availability. Yet the refineries are not uh, working. And so what we have uh, what we have seen now with the withdrawal of the subsidy is uh, the airlines are passing their inability, their incompetence, their indolence to the ordinary Nigerian people. If we have put the refinery on the very fast putting and what have it, if only will not be having the challenges that we are having in this uh, petroleum uh, industry uh, Yes, Furthermore, they say fuel is smuggled out of the country. If fuel is smuggled out of the country, who is responsible? Who should ensure that the borders are not closed, that the borders are well marked? You have immigration in there, you have custom in there, you have the army in there, and you have the state security in there, you have the police. All of them are at the border. Even the civil defense uh, force, they are at the border. So why is it difficult for all these amateur of security agencies to police the border and make sure it is not uh, porous and that fuel are never smuggled out of uh, the country? This might be some of the reasons that, uh, some of the things that are freaking the conscience of these people, and uh, it may be the underlying factor why they are now trying to throw out uh, uh, the petroleum uh, or the subsidy line thing that we are talking about. Yeah, it's actually the water bill I was asking about, but um, uh, uh, there's also the other, let, let's just follow up since you're talking about the subsidy. Subsidy reps have demanded that NNPCL um, should have an audit over unaccounted two trillion naira assets. Two trillion naira okay. assets. So there should be an audit uh, in this um, agency. Okay, these people, the N NNPCL, are saying that even right now Nigeria is owing them lots and lots of money, two point something trillion, I think, two point eight or so trillion. Okay. Right now, there is some unaccounted two trillion naira assets in NNPCL. Uh, some subsidiaries bought crude oil, according to the reps, uh, without evidence of payment. That's what the legislators are saying. And legislators, OPS, back refineries, uh, privatization as Uber, Bolt, drivers begin nationwide strike. Okay, so these people who Nigeria is owing th two point something trillion naira are the ones that have unaccounted two trillion naira assets in that place. What are your comments on that? Well, uh, thank you. Or if I didn't get the one you said earlier on, uh, too correctly, I mean, actually, in a very a little out of place and order. Now, with the one you're talking about now, the audit yes. and the NMPC saying that um, uh, Nigerian people are owing them. Yeah. First and foremost, let me say this. We have had so many audits in the past. What have been the consequences or what have we benefited from those audits? Nothing. The audit reports are usually set under the carpet. And then the country or the institution that is affected will go on uh, to the business as, as a leader. Look at the case of the Canadian of the country, who was supposed to be the gatekeeper with regard to the management of the money, with regard to the money of the person of the country. Look at the mongrel uh, amount of uh, corruption that has been said to have, or that has been alleged to place uh, on them. And the question now is, uh, why is it that all these don't work in Nigeria? Very, very simple. 
when most times when they want to do when the institutions, the government or even some private firm want to select an auditor, they actually advertise those audit uh, um, uh, things for all manners of auditors to apply and then the best is selected among them. If you usually try to a kind of private selection, a selective thing, they will usually select their friends to come in and notice their own musicians. So when your friend come in to audit your own musicians and what happens? It's uh, most likely you will never give the full uh, audit account for what has uh, really uh, happened. And so that is one issue. Furthermore, auditing the NMP is a very, very affluent task. Because you and I will know that the NMPC is being run in a very, very opaque uh, manner. And the people behind this opaqueness of the NMPC are very, very powerful people. In fact, the vice president, uh, Alexis Chetima, he uh, recently came out and said the people in the US sector are in Kaba, who are very, very powerful and who are very, very difficult uh, to, to, to deal with. So if you have not dismantled their power structure, if you have not dismantled that Kaba in the US sector and all that, whatever all this you say you want to do and all that, in my humble opinion, might not give you the desired um, uh, result. Furthermore, you will remember, I also know, that most of the transactions of the NNPC is being done to a kind of a uh, uh, good uh, swap. They will send to certain companies uh, crude oil, and then when those ones refine them, they will send them back to Nigeria as a uh, finished uh, uh, product. So, how do you now determine how much, what do you consider, how do you monetize, what is in spent a brother as a crude oil for refinery, and what you eventually take back as refined uh, product? That is a very, very difficult um, assignment in my own uh, umbulo, umbulo opinion. I would rather, uh, instead of wasting resources again on uh, auditing the account of the NMPC, that the president should go ahead with what he has started to do. He has instructed the NMPC to stop the good swap and all that. He has also said that in the data that have money to now go ahead and import petroleum products into the country and sell at whatever prices that uh, they, they, they want to sell it. Uh, going by way of audit of the NMPC and all that, it's never likely to give us the desired report with respect to the challenges that we have on the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's look at one, one headline that is really interesting to me. It's like the most interesting. Uh, towards the Hello. end. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Yeah. At the dying minute of the last administration, we, we got a, a plane land in Nigeria called Nigeria Air. It was launched. And stories that we are hearing right now are that we can't even find the plane, plane in Nigeria again. It has returned to Ethiopia because it never was a Nigerian plane. Now, those are the stories we heard. Right now, uh, the House of Reps has come up to say that that launch was a fraud. And they are calling on the present... Uh, administration to probe that launch and bring the offi officers that were involved to book. And some other people have even said they should suspend um, Nigeria Air. What are your thoughts on what is playing out right now? Well, I agree with those who are calling on the authorities for to put a probe on the reporting of uh, the Nigerian Air. The information we have uh, out in there, on social media, and the conventional media and all that, is to the fact that they have the aircraft that was brought into Nigeria. Actually, it belongs to Ethiopian Airlines. And they merely inscribe Nigeria's name and logo on that uh, aircraft. I suspect that the Minister of Aviation was just trying to impress the President Mohamed Buhari and also impress the Nigerian people that the vow when they were coming in in 2016, that they would bring back the Nigerian Airways. And it is never to accomplish that they are promised and all that. That the whole place in the last minute in which they were leaving office to go and bring an aircraft from Ethiopia and then inscribe the Nigerian air on it, pretending that uh, it should be the floating of the Nigerian air. That is a worth auditing. Why is it worth auditing? It is worth auditing because millions of dollars would have gone into that uh, uh, project, which in a way can be decided to be a, a fluke and an attempt to win the Nigerian people. It's out there. And when you look at the drilling resources of the college, especially the art college, the foreign estate, nobody should be allowed to toy with the little foreign estate that's coming to the country and just get away with it uh, uh, like the education minister has attempted to do. Furthermore, don't forget 
that the Nigerian Yahweh has been sold to Mr. Jimmy Israel, an agreement was signed, and he paid for the Nigerian Yahweh. You cannot float another Nigerian Yahweh without a revisit to the contract between Nigeria and Jimmy Ibrahim. So, the whole thing is sometimes uh, very ridiculous. You saw Nigeria Yahweh, somebody was running it, maybe has run it again and all that, but it's been so. You must revisit that agreement, you must revisit that sale, and maybe revoke the bill or renegotiate with the man who sold Nigeria Yahweh because the man has no more the society interest in the Nigeria Yahweh. He also retained all the franchises with regard to the logo and the name on, on the Nigerian Yahweh. A kind of uh, <coughs> headmark, so to say, on the Nigerian Yahweh. So a minister cannot just wake up in view of that agreement, in view of that sales agreement, and then begin to say it's reclosing the Nigerian Yahweh. I agree that we require to visit that uh, last minute uh, Abracadabra that was done at the Minister of Aviation without any restraint or caution or um, refusal by the outcome president. Mm. Okay. Um, artisans, um, business owners have accused NLC and TUC of selling out. Remember that today was supposed to be um, a strike action, the beginning of strike action by the NLC and TUC. And they suspended the, uh, the strike uh, pending uh, the outcome of the meeting that has been scheduled for, is it Tuesday or so, uh, next week? On the 9th, precisely. Okay, that's been scheduled for the 9th. So if this meeting has not been held and NLC has already uh, called off the strike, artisans are very, very suspicious. Business owners also are suspicious. They say they have sold out and that is what is happening. But the CSOs, the civil society organizations have said that they are going to go ahead with this, um, with protest. This one will not be a strike action, but with protest over uh, the fuel subsidy removal and the kind of sufferings that Nigerians are having to go through because of that. What are your thoughts on uh, this? Well, I want to go with what is pending on the social media that uh, the Nigeria, or most of the principal officers of the Nigerian Labour Union you know, in Nigeria, whether they be NLC or the CVC and all that, are not neutral on this issue. That most of them are participants. At least you have somebody like Ajero, the president of the NLC, who was openly campaigning uh, for the Labour Party presidential candidate, uh, Mr. Mr. Peter Ovi. And you and I will know that Mr. Peter Ovi has been saying that he is also going to remove the subsidy on fuel or petroleum products uh, in Nigeria. Then you also look at some of the other Labour leaders and all that. They have their different sympathies either to the APC or to the CPC and all that. And even if they never had all the presidential candidates, all the political parties that contended the last election, were saying they were going to remove first of it, including the CPC and the NLC and the CPC. This NLC and the CPC never saw anything wrong at that period in time. I agree with people on the social media that they ought not to be seen anything wrong now with the APC that has gotten the power to say that it's going to remove uh, the first of it. My guess is that uh, because the NLC and the CUC people knew they have shot themselves in the foot and that uh, going ahead with this uh, fight might not uh, carry the kind of weight or the popular pulling that the other nations should carry. That is the reason why they have been uh, blowing hot and cold with regard to going on with this fight that is supposed to uh, take off uh, uh, this morning, are they? Wednesday, this morning, and all that. Well, it is not true. They can still go to the drawing board and then uh, we strategize and come out with a better uh, plan as it comes out to fight this cost of uh, the first of the uh, uh, removal. And uh, there is also a lesson to learn from all of this that in the future, Nepal may require to distance itself from all the different political parties that we have in the country. In fact, it might be necessary for them to pull out all the of, out of the Labour Party so that they will have a mouth, they will have a uh, mentality. They will be able to speak authoritatively uh, when issues like this uh, come up in the future. You cannot be supporting a political party that also says it's going to withdraw for subsidy and not be opposing another political party that won the election, which is now trying to remove the first subsidy in the country. And uh, you know, I have also compared that maybe we should allow the Nigerian allies to remove the first subsidy because the argument 
they have been giving up for their incompetence, for their lack of uh, performance, is because they've been paying with sums of money on a petroleum subsidy. So when the subsidy is now removed and what are you, let us see what excuses they will have for not uh, for non performance. Mm. Well, uh, to be fair to some of these people who are arguing, um, every, every person who was talking about removal of fuel subsidy had a plan how to remove this subsidy. For instance, you mentioned uh, Peter B, you mentioned Atiku, Abubakar, and the rest of those ones. The, the argument is not that fuel subsidy should not be removed by anybody in Nigeria who, is, who may be protesting or threatening to go on strike. The argument is that the way and manner it was removed without anything that will cushion the effect of this removal. That is the grouse that everybody is talking about. So right now, it, it will not be fair just to say that um, people are talking because they are partisan, because everybody is in support of the fuel subsidy removal, but the way it was removed is the problem. Do you still think that they have no moral standing to protest or to say that it should not have been done the way it was done just because they are perceived to be uh, faction, uh, partisan? Well, whatever I mean the body on say, including us and what I do, I'm not too sure the issue is uh, whether there is some sort of pushing the effect of the removal of the subsidy or not. If you say Programs of palliative to fishing, the removal of the first subsidy and what happened. I will now ask you the question where will the resources come from to really provide the palliative for the removal of this uh, first subsidy? Thing? Now the country is borrowing money to pay at the federal and the state level to pay staff salaries. Yeah, well, the today, amount of uh, debt but, on but, the country. Today, just a moment. Uh, to, to almost day. more than. Just a, moment, just a moment, just a moment, just a moment. I understand that, but so that I don't lose this thought. Uh, some people have asked the question that if subsidy was being paid, that means there was money that was being paid uh, for this arrangement of subsidy. And now they have removed subsidy, which means that money that was supposed to be paid for subsidy has been put somewhere else. Where else where was this money put, put into? Because if they didn't pay for subsidy, it should have gone to somewhere else. Where did it go to? Okay, I, I think that will be uh, all that we can get from Tunde Kola. We would have loved to hear him uh, answer this because that's the question a lot of people are asking. You, you stopped putting money in a particular thing. That means that money has been freed for something else. And Nigerians expected that that something else should have been the palliatives that will cushion the effect of subsidy removal. Let's say 100 billion is voted for subsidy removal, or, uh, or 1 trillion is voted for subsidy removal, or for subsidy rather, not removal. Now it has been removed. That means that 1 trillion naira will not be spent on subsidy anymore. Where did it go to? That's the question we're asking. N maybe. Um, if we knew so much about economics, we would know uh, where it has, been, it has been put into. But we are the ordinary Nigerians that may not have that kind of information at our fingertips. You need to explain to Nigerians that now that you have stopped subsidy, that means we are not spending on subsidy anymore. That money that was supposed to be spent on subsidy, where is it? If you can explain that to us, then we will understand. But if you don't explain that to us, then we will keep asking the question, as laymen, as people who may not have the information, but also as people who may have the capacity to do what you would not want to be done, just because we are ignorant. That's how it is. So whoever is in, in charge, whoever needs to explain to Nigerians, take it gently with Nigerians and explain to us like babies so that we get to understand. Because we all know, or at least we feel, that it's our collective inheritance that is, as it is. It's a collective wealth that is being used. The way it is being used, we need to know how it is being used. And if we are being deprived of one thing, let us know the advantages and where you have put that one thing to. Where you have, 
directed your energy to, your resources, your money, your everything that you have, you have removed from subsidy, where did you take it to? Let's know these things. These are very simple things that if we know, we can be very sympathetic with the govern government or we can be very understanding with the government and let things flow the way they should flow. We'll take another break and when we return, we'll go to our first hot topic. Stay with us.